Okay, so let's hopefully end it off on this part and let's continue with Isaiah 55 and 3. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Why? Because many people are on the path of death and they think they're doing the right thing. So it says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Which this everlasting covenant is found in Ezekiel, which is talking about the everlasting covenant of peace. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler, and a commander of the peoples. And that's why we read now in Hosea 9 and 7. The days of punishment are coming. The days of reckoning are at hand. Let Yasharal know this. Because your sins are so many, and your hostility so great. The prophet is considered a fool, the inspired person, a maniac. Ezekiel 16 and 1. Remember, it's all about waiting for the word of, of the Most High Yahweh to come to pass. So look what it says here. The word of Yahweh came to me. Son of man, confront Yerushalayim with her detestable practices. Okay, so again, this is why the Most High Yahweh says, you know, that he will put his words in us. He will put his spirit on us. To do his will. Isaiah 58 and 1. Shout it out loud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. You see that? So the Most High Yahweh says that He hears you. You know, trying to reach out to Him, but. You still have blood on your hands. Your garments are still filthy. So again, for day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways. As if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. And again, this is talking about these religious folks. These, you know, these people who do not want to get it right. These people who do not want to take that spiritual fast. Right? Those people who do not want to rest in the spiritual sabbath of the most high Yahweh. it says here they ask me for just decisions and seem eager for god to come near them now this is why it says in ezekiel 11 and 16 therefore say this is what the sovereign Yahweh says although i sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries yet for a little while i have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone all right again your temple is the holy place of the most high so if you are filling your mind with other things that is not according to truth according to the word of yahweh then what happens is that he will not be able to come near you you see what i'm saying this is why it says, although I sent them far away among the nations. In other words, you know, you, you started following the ways of the other nations. But it says, but, but yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them. Okay, in other words, the Most High Yahweh has always been here for you to return to Him. You just have to be willing. You understand? You have to be willing. It's just that simple. The same way, you know, you was willing to understand everything they taught you about God, right? Well, you have to be willing. To accept proper correction. So now let's go ahead and read Psalms chapter 31 verse 19. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you. So this is why it says in Malachi 3 and 10. Bring back the tithes to the storehouse that they may be food in my house. Right? Yahweh's house is your temple. Okay, your mind is referred to as a land. Okay, so if you're not basically speaking according to the word of God, then your land is going to be desolate. Your mind will not become fruitful. You will not be able to increase in understanding who is God. So it says, how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all, on those who take refuge in you you see that so these good things are only for those who fear the one true god okay 
You cannot be worshiping a false God or you cannot be thinking that what you've been told about God is the right way and expect to have blessings, expect to have prosperity in the word of God. No, it's not going to happen like that. You understand? The Most High Yahweh is going to, uh, he's going to basically rebuke you according to what you're doing. Like he says, he will, he will, he will repay them in due measure. All right. According to your deeds. So if you're willing, then the Most High Yahweh says that he will not, he will no longer, you know, remember your inequities. Does not matter what you did in the past. But if you're not going to be willing to understand, well, prepare to uh, receive calamity, prepare to uh, go through ruin, and prepare to be put to shame. It's either or. So look what it says here about his sincere servants. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. So it does not matter what people are saying about us about the name of Yahweh, about what we believe in, right? It does not matter. But as long as you call on the name of the Most High, as long as you are willing to acknowledge the name of Yahweh, then He will hide you from all human intrigues. Do you understand that? This is why it says, No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. Okay? You keep them safe in your dwelling, from what? From accusing tongues. Psalms 91 and 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. It's all about trusting, it's all about faith. It's all about believing. If you're putting your trust, your faith, and your belief in something else, well, understand this here. You are not, okay, you are not going to receive salvation. You are going to always constantly be out there confused. You are always constantly going to be fearing what they are telling you. You will never be assured of your life, okay? Okay, sorry. And it says, Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. What you talking about? The plagues that's out there. Okay? The wrath of God. The judgment. And everything that comes upon the people that, that go against God's will and God's laws. Those are the deadly pestilence. And the foulest snare is talking about that wicked wisdom. Okay, that's out there to entice you, to get you, to trap you. So now let's read Psalms 106 and 16. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, which this here represents the house of David and the house of Levi, which the Most High Yahweh says that he will raise up in these last days. And they will be the ones ministering to him, that is the house of David. So again, it says, In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to Yahweh. You see that? So this is the reason why we are going to continue to do what we have to do for the Most High. Because, you know, people are going to be envious. People are going to be mad. And there's nothing that we can do to change the way that they look at us or, you know, the way they feel towards us. So you have to live on and you have to do what you have to do for the Most High. Okay? You can't let these people get to you because you got to remember. Satan is in their mind. Satan is devouring their mind, okay? Satan is going to try to use these people against you, believe it or not. It's going to happen, all right? And I'll tell you this from experience. Satan is going to try to use people against you so that you will not do the will of God, so that you, you know, you, you want to give up. So now let's read this here. And uh, 2 Chronicles 36 and 16. But they mocked. The Most High's messengers despised his words and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh was aroused against his people and there was no remedy. You see that again. This is how our people is. This is why the Most High Yahweh says that they are stubborn. They are hard headed. They are not willing to change until, you know, things happen to them, until shit hit the fan, literally. Then they want to say, oh my God. 
oh, but I didn't know. You know, I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought, but you thought wrong. Okay? You thought wrong. That's the pro that's the problem here. That's the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that his anger will be aroused against his people until there is no remedy. Because once you have irked the Most High, that's it, you know? Once... He decides not to show you any more pity, any more compassion. That is it. Now let's read Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Ah, Yahweh, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. But instead, what happened? Well, let's show you what happened. Psalms 106 and 16 will show you what happened. If we can uh, get it first. So again, you know. The Most High Yahweh says, In the camp they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to Yahweh. Okay? So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that he do not change. Our people are the ones who change. They're the ones who are constantly with, with the mixed emotions. You know, one minute they want to worship God, next minute they don't. One minute, you know, they're calling you, your, you know, their brother. Right? One minute they're calling you their sister, next minute they're hating on you. This is what's going on. I mean, the Most High Yahweh says, right? That uh, friend deceives friend, neighbor deceives neighbor, right? They have trained their tongues to lie. But Yahweh don't change. He has always been the same God that took us out of Egypt. <laughs> he will always be the same God that will take us out of the land of the north, as the scripture says. Okay? He does not change. It's people that change. You know, people that want to go ahead and, 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 you know, try to go ahead and give what is God to unto other gods, all right? And it's, like I said, the Most High Yahweh says that what is his is his. I mean, this is the reason why the scripture says that he who is the portion of Jacob is, is not like Jesus, Sheba, Buddha, Allah, right? So he, he is the maker of all things. So Malachi 3 and 7, it says, Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you. You see that? So again, you you have to be willing to seek your God. You have to be willing to take his words to heart in order so that he can uh, dwell in his temple, right? Which is your mind. So return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahweh Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Now let's read Zechariah chapter 1, verse 2. And it says, Yahweh was very angry with your ancestors therefore tell the people this is what Yahweh Almighty says return to me declares Yahweh Almighty and I will return to you says Yahweh do not be like your ancestors to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed this is why Yahweh Almighty says turn from your evil ways and your evil practices but they would not listen or pay attention to me. You see what I'm saying? They wanted to give what was God unto their so-called gods, right? This is why the Most High Yahweh says they exchange their their uh, their 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 precious jewelry into vile images and detestable idols. All right. Again, but they would not listen or pay attention to me. Declares Yahweh. That says, where are your ancestors now, and the prophets? Do they live forever? But they're not my words and my decrees, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, overtake your ancestors. Then they repented and said, Yahweh Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve, just as he has determined to do. Now let's read Jeremiah 1 and 13. The word of Yahweh came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling. And I answered, It is tilting towards us from the north. Yahweh said to me, From the north, disaster will be poured on all who live in the land. Sorry about that. The video got blurred. Now, we're going to go ahead and read about the pot. Once again, sorry about this madness. Don't know what's going on. 
Ezekiel 6 and 1, it says, The word of Yahweh came to me. Right? So the word of Yahweh is coming to pass in these times and in these days. Said a man, set your face against the mountains of Yahshuaal. Prophesy against them. And say, you mountains of Yahshuaal, hear the word of the sovereign Yahweh. This is what the sovereign Yahweh says. To the mountains and to the hills and to the ravines and the valleys. I'm about to bring a sword against you and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished and your incense altars will be smashed and I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Yasharalites in front of their idols and I will scatter your bones around your altars. As it says in Ezekiel 23 and sorry 24 and 3 Tell this rebellious people a parable and say to them this is what the sovereign Yahweh says Put on the cooking pot put it on and pour water into it Put it into it the pieces of meat, or the choice pieces, the leg and the shoulder. Fill it with the best of these bones. And it says, take the pick of the flock, pile wood beneath it for the bones. Bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. For this is what the sovereign Yahweh says. Woe to the city of bloodshed, to the pot now encrusted, whose deposits will not go away. Take the meat out piece by piece in whatever order it comes. For the blood she shed in her midst, she poured it on the bare rocks. She did not pour it on the ground where the dust would cover it. To stir up wrath and take revenge, I put her blood on the bare rock so that it would not be covered. And therefore, this is what the sovereign Yahweh says, Woe to the city of bloodshed. I too will pile the wood high. As we just read, I will lay the dead bodies of the Yasharalites in front of their idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. Like it says, and Isaiah chapter 65 and let's go ahead and start off at verse 4 look what it says here about these people who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of impure meats who say keep away don't come near me for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. You see why the Most High Yahweh says? Woe to the bloody city. I too will pile the wood on high. And now let's read verse 10, Ezekiel 24 and 10. So heap on the wood and kindle the fire. Cook the meat well, mixing in the spices and let the bones be charred okay again such people are smoking my nostrils a fire that keeps burning all day right because you know they think that they're too holier than thou right for I am too sacred for you but the most high Yahweh says in uh, Proverbs 30 and 10 do not slander a, a servant to their master or they will curse you and you will pay for it there are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. Those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth. Whose eyes are ever so haughty, whose glances are so disdainful. Those whose teeth are swords and jaws are set with knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among mankind. And you know, this is why the Most High Yahweh says, 
of the righteous hate what is false.